are these people? Our first story is one that I wrote. Actually, actually, wow. yeah. Um, I got fired up last Tuesday, and a bunch of things were happening. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just kind of summarize everything that is going on and put it together. Even though it's they're not really connected, it all kind of leads to rumble in a way. Um, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Sort of, sort of, in a way. Because Sputnik was on Rumble, and now they're not. Rumble did launch a gaming channel pretty successfully, in my opinion, or, or relaunch their gaming, their Rumble gaming, which they've had for a while. Want to talk about Rumble Rants, and then we'll talk a little bit about Rockfin and why we're not there, and just a very quick few minutes on that. So I put this on Indie Media today, on, on, and I'll Coming do it. Coming to a Substack newsletter near you that's right you can do that indiemediatoday.com i started out because i was really upset that i noticed that last week we got rumble rant from our friend anna mares and love you and really appreciate you for it um she sent over a rumble rant last week and i noticed that when they credited our account it was literally half of what she had contributed and that was Where's alarming the money, Lebowski? that was alarming so I asked about it, and I got an answer that I wasn't too thrilled with. Um, I was today years old when I learned just how deeply Rumble had its hand in the pocket of monetized creators on its platform. After a quick audit, I learned that Rumble was pocketing half the money, literally 50%, contributed by viewers during live streams as Rumble rants. Well, not exactly, and I'm going to... I put an addendum just below that, but... That's before the creators have to deal with processing fees from Stripe or PayPal. That's on top of the ad monetization that Rumble is already making for the crappy ads they run on all the videos for non-premium subscribers, and of which creators get tiny shares of that ad revenue, like pennies or fractions of pennies even. And those ads are it really bad. Geometry. They're really bad. It's like... Don Jr. here talking about investment. Oh God, please don't. I don't want I don't want this guy talking. I'm Michael Jordan. Stop it. Get some help. They do. And then the other one about the lighter that the US military doesn't want you to have that'll burn through anything. It's gross. Sorry, Rumble. <laughs> All right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Ga gaming on Rumble did reply to our tweet as an addendum and said that they only take 20% on rants but that the App Store for Apple and Google are taking an additional 30%. Rumble still does not take a cut from monthly subscriptions, and it's still 100% to creators. So if you subscribe monthly on Rumble, we get 100% of that money, but we only get it once a month. Rumble sits on it for the entire month. So I would really appreciate, again, use one of those two, two QR codes or one of those two methods, Cash App, or Kofi, if you can, or as Steve goes, the Kofi, Kodash Fi. Too funny. Um, my question is, is, is this market competitive? Now, YouTube takes 30% of Super Chats and channel memberships. Rockfin was taking 28%, but lately that seems higher to everyone that's talking about Rockfin. Rumble is taking none of the monthly subscription revenue generated and only 20% of the rants whether on a mobile app or on the web, which is not awful, but they really should be pulling in profit elsewhere between ads and cloud hosting to subsidize that cost as YouTube clearly does. Why isn't YouTube or Cash App or PayPal or any of these other services tacking on a 30% if you're using their, the app store or the app that's registered in the app store? Doesn't really make much sense to me. The price is wrong, bitch. Oh, man, another R.I.P. to Bob Barker, right? Didn't he die recently? <laughs> dude, you're <laughs> killing so me. Dude, dude. Games are on shows. So we're going to have to update the board. Twitch. <laughs> I tried looking into Twitch, and, like, Twitch fucking rips people off like you wouldn't believe. Right? They're, an, yeah. they're, they're entirely confusing, but they also seem to take half of the monthly subscriptions plus 29 to 50% of tips, which are, like, done in what's called bits, it's weird as shit. Like, uh, partners get. 
Yeah, it's it's not even it's not even bit connect. It's 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 like match beans. <laughs> yeah, it's bit. Partner, partners get a share of that ad revenue, but it's minuscule. They seem to take a lot of the revenue generated for providing the platform for people to even stream. Right? Patreon falls in the 15% range. Substack works out to about 12.5% after Stripe's processing fee. But by far, the lowest cost donate links processors are direct donate links, Cash App, Venmo, and Kofi. It's like not even close. Yeah. And it really matters. Like, it, especially for as little as we're getting. 10%, 15% on every single transaction, it starts adding up, especially when you're also paying a fee on top of that 15%. Yeah. But I am once again asking for your financial support. Well, we would have to be doing that if we were going to do that. So I'll put that up for a second just as a joke. Sorry, Bernie. <laughs> all right. But it's not all bad news. Rumble, Rumble Gaming gets some love. And a CEO actually listens to his customers. Maybe. Maybe. That's another question entirely. I think Reese on to this one, too. So what happened last weekend? We saw Rumble CEO Chris Pavlovsky. And I just think that, the, that his name starts with Pavlov, which is kind of funny and ironic of all things. Chris Pavlovsky snapped into action. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, late on a Saturday night into Sunday morning in a response to a video posted to Elon's platform, which shall remain nameless. All right. A gaming creator, a Gen X gaming creator, Silver Fox, who's been devoted to streaming on Rumble for more than two years. He made this passionate 22-minute video crying out for help from Rumble corporate about the lack of support for gamers, issues with the app, the streaming quality, frustration at the focus on conservative leading politics, of which he is. But he said, look, it's only it's a game. Why do you have to be mad? Well, it's not only a game. It's them trying to make, trying to monetize <laughs> it. And these creators are trying to monetize it, right? Chris apparently saw that tweet and replied within three hours, which is unusual for the CEO of a multi-million dollar company to do after midnight on a Saturday. So kudos for that, which I gave credit for below. All right. And I had that. I didn't include that tweet where I said, this is, this is good to see. This is encouraging that Chris is listening. And he said that, you know, this is interesting and we will immediately take action at one o'clock in the morning. I was like, wow. Okay. So within 12 I hours, said, hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. Within 12 oh. hours, on Sunday right. the 13th, one of Silver Fox's suggestions, which was creating a Twitter account and posting about gaming on Rumble, was implemented right away, and game at Gaming on Rumble was officially launched, engaging with creators and making its presence felt starting day one with a completely different vibe than their main account, which was much more loose and fun, and I thought they did a really good job for a company of establishing a presence and trying to appeal. I think it's really interesting that right before election time, they're making this big play at gamers. Good of a job. The campaign launch was skillfully coordinated and seemed very professional and buttoned up. It got people engaged and excited. And that seemed desperate. For, and, and those people definitely seemed desperate for some love. And they were eating it up. Granted, that streamer... Silver Fox said in his video that he had spent his own money to meet Chris in person in Miami at the Rumble House. So he may have had Chris's what? attention already. Yes, at the Rumble House. Okay. Okay. All right. I encourage everyone to watch Silver Fox's video. It's enlightening. I linked to it in, in the article. I felt terrible for him by the end of the video. He said at the end that he didn't even earn enough monthly to cover his monthly internet bill. And he's been doing this six to seven days a week, six to ten hours at a time, streaming. He also has a politics stream and show. And now he's doing a book reading stream. This guy's putting in the work. And I again I, I was heartbroken. And I was like, dude, like they should be paying you more. You should be earning more. And if you're not, 
if that's what you're there to do and people should be supporting your stream more than he said he's got 35 paid subs which gets him like what a hundred and fifty dollars a month ish before rumbles fees and stripes fees start mm -hmm. getting in their hands in his pocket and maybe he's got well no rumble doesn't take a fee of subscriptions and then he gets the occasional rumble rant of which from the app they take you know he loses half no, rumble's taking 20 app store's taking 30 and he can't control and like i said we can't control how somebody gives and it's unfortunate and we don't really want to have to tell people how to and how not to but when they don't understand what the implications are to the people they're trying to give it to and they want to give us the money they want to make sure it goes to us and not to the apple Shut app up store take my money apple is worth three and a half trillion dollars today Three, and let me repeat that. Apple is worth three and a half trillion dollars. Where is it? I hit one button, it didn't work. The other button okay. worked. Three and a half trillion Weird. dollars, all right? And they don't need 30% of our App Store money on every single chat that gets contributed that's supposed to help us pay the bills here. Because we're not trying to make a lot of money and set the world on fire. We're trying to live. But to look at the volume of streamers live at any one time, however, gaming is only about the eighth or ninth, maybe the seventh most popular category at any time during the day. It draws between five and 20% of the total live viewership that news, trending, podcasts, which are three of the most popular categories draw. So it was a little strange to see gaming leapfrog all these other categories like conspiracies and 24-7 TV channels. Why are they getting this much attention directly from the CEO over one smaller game streamer's complaint? I mean, Silver Fox has about 3,500 subscribers. It just kind of jumped out to me like, what's going on here? So this is two random times that I looked um, in the middle of the day, uh, in the in a morning on Sunday. All right, 1,700, uh, 1,170 live viewers watching gaming. That doesn't even say how many people are gaming live. All right. And then later on, uh, on, Monday, on the evening of Monday the 14th, they had 2,900 people watching gaming. But in the meantime, they had 37,900 people watching news, another 17,000 people watching trending news, and another 16 watching podcasts. So again, 2,900 people versus a much larger potential audience over here. Why are they playing down here? They're trying to do something, in my mind. And I write that. I have to admit that I'm a little suspicious that there was probably already a marketing campaign in the works just about to be ready to be launched and Chris sees this video as an opportunity to introduce that new campaign. Maybe I'm just a skeptical cynic. I don't know. It could have even been coordinated for all we know. However, I kind of doubt that. I don't think this guy would put that out there that he's not earning enough to pay his internet bill without, you know, I don't think he'd volunteer that if it wasn't genuine. Yeah. The fact that the account was created in April what happened to launch this weekend in October? Okay, that's the rum, the gaming on Rumble. Didn't tweet until October 13th. There was also a video trailer created that launched this weekend, that last weekend, that looked like it wasn't produced overnight. And you pointed that one out, Reef. Likely, those creators would have yeah. had to have been contacted, a trailer for each placed in a box, and then post-production. My guess is that 18-second relaunch video took close to a week to produce. All right. I mean, at least he, three or four days, you know. But here's the depends big thing. On how fast. It, none of it's going to matter. It because, depends on if you care, if you, like, need to ask people for permission or not, you know. Right? Well, none like, of it's really going to matter because if Rumble's planning on taking half the money that the viewers contribute to support their game streamers, or at least not Rumble, mm -hmm. but they're not going to get half the money contributed on, on Rumble rants, I'm worried that they're setting their, themselves up for failure in a genre already being served by YouTube, Twitch, and Kick. So keep an eye on this developing situation, all right? 
But also in this quick hit, in this article I wrote, I also was upset about Sputnik. Um, and I think that we're going to feel the loss of Sputnik a lot more than people realize. All right. I grabbed this tweet from Ian. Well, I happened to see in the chats on the last day, they announced uh, on Tuesday in the morning that they would, that today is the last day of Sputnik USA radio. Sputnik radio is closing down thanks to U.S. sanctions. It's just impossible to continue financially. So Ian says, U.S. staff at Sputnik is done. Sanctions finally got us. Radio and U.S.-based writers are done. It was a pleasure working there. Our speech was just too much for the freest country in the world. Anyone looking for a writer or editor, let me know. So that's Ian. I feel I feel terrible for him and everyone else that worked there. Americans. Yep. Remember, these are Americans. People like Garland Nixon and Dr. Wilmer Leon, who you can see that was on with Pasta earlier this week. CIA whistleblower John Kiriakou. Rachel Blevins, who was on with Hard Lens this week. With with hit and I think they reran that this morning. Manila Chan, who just launched a new show with Ted Rawl, their show on YouTube as independents. But what a blow to anti-imperialist dissident media. Sputnik was one of the. F Thank Sorry, you. I was just bad sad violin. Sad music. <laughs> Sputnik was one of the few outlets to let people <laughs> say what was on their mind and allegedly never told its hosts what it could or could not say. All right. So Ted Rawl saying Biden Harris say they're fighting for democracy, yet today Sputnik News US is being forced to shut down due to Biden Harris sanctions. My radio show and cartoons for them are being quashed. So are the other amazing shows. I go off the air with the station at noon. <sighs> R.I.P. Sputnik is right. Um, it's a damn shame, you know, so much for free speech in this country, so much for, you know, being able to broadcast as long as you had the resources to say what you want to say on the air. No, guess not. What I said, is this actually, I thought, I thought this was America. yeah, exactly. Randy, this reminds me of one of the very first original articles I wrote, which was about RT America shutting down due to the sanctions imposed after the launch of Russia's strategic military operation against Ukraine in the defense of the Donbass at the end of February 2022. All right. And what I make a plea because for... Putin's a madman. Yeah, we can see he's he's certainly not going to be very relevant in about eight weeks. He'll be, he'll be shilling TYT for a job soon. Democracy now. <laughs> He'll be a, a the MSNBC is not going to want anything to do with him because he's anti corporate. So that's that's good. So he'll probably go go away somewhere and he'll pop up somewhere. These guys never actually really go away. But like I said, please support these creators as they have no choice but to go independent while they search for their next gig if they can find one. If they're not totally blackballed because they worked with Russians and things are totally being escalated right now against Russia. If you haven't figured that out yet. The third part of this article I wrote, or for the third slash fourth, we talked about Rumble, we talked about Sputnik, now we talk about Rockfin, and how they continue to really be confusing. All right. Bottom line is, is that latest word I hear from the creators is that they actually got paid out last week. Although the report is that people are confused about how much they were paid out at, what rate, and... Nothing has been sent to them. Rockfin hasn't provided any guidance or responded at all. I publicly, wow. I publicly challenged Martin Floriani on Twitter to reply, and he has not responded. I'm not really surprised like everything else I've sent to him. And I've gotten a bunch of creators to retweet it, and he still just doesn't want to address it. And still no word from anyone at Rockfin about our INN channel working. They've done zero marketing for months, which is weird. But then at 3.30 on Tuesday, I got an email promoting four brand new wrestling channels. Interestingly, those new channels are all sports and wrestling focused and not targeted at all toward independent free thinking media or open mind. Mm. I, wonder, I wonder if I should reach out to and contact those new arrivals and have a little chat sharing my experience. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's not a bad idea. I have not done that yet. And I'm not 
I'm not trying to start trouble with Rockfin. I want it to work. But I really, it's fucked up how they've just ghosted us. They don't know how to fix it. They don't want to address it. And they're just kind of walking away from it. Like we're not even worth it. Yeah! All right. Um, yes, Jamal Thomas did have a job at Sputnik. He also lost his job, as did Malik Abdul. Yeah. With fault lines. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a real shame. Uh, also, at the end there, and I'm going to go to the slide, Indy Media Today and INN operate on a value-for-value value system. Everything we do is free to all. We don't paywall our content, but we do need and deeply appreciate your support in order to keep running. One way to do that is with a monthly subscription at my newsletter if you feel you get value out of the shows and articles and can spare a few bucks a month. A monthly subscription will help us continue to produce quality shows like this and clips that challenge mainstream corporate narratives and amplify independent voices. We need your help. Show me the money! Support your favorite independent media creators. Whether that's so us or somebody. Sa 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 whatever. Whether that's us or anyone else, but hopefully that's us because you're here and you're watching on Senate Sunday night. It's how do we miss that? Hi, everybody. Who are these people? Who are these people? Well, these people have been really awesome and have actually already given to INN. Um, and there are several different ways that you can support the, the listed methods over there Cash App, Kofi. You see those QR codes over there in the corners, as well as. Patreon, PayPal, those are the easy ways, or a subscription at INN Newsletter, where again, we've had more than 70 subscribers. I had to update that. I didn't today. But Anna gave twice. I forgot to put an X2 next to Anna. Charlie Mack hooked us up during the clip show Friday night for Jesse Jett. That was so much fun. We ran two hours looped twice, so we went over four hours of Jesse Jett goodness. Reef is shaking his head. He can't believe it. He's still exhausted. And in case you yeah. did not know, all the, the INN channels were everywhere. You you can find videos, except for TikTok, because they took us down. Substack over there, innnewsletter.com. YouTube, Rumble, Kick.com. Well, all right, we're on our way to a million, just like, just like Kit. And now T-Lab's over there, so follow us on Kick. Twitch, what's up, Twitch? I don't know what's up with Twitch. Odyssey, Telegram.me. T.me slash Indie News Network and Twitter. That's our, that's the, the Elon.com. No, X, the Twitter, whatever. Twitter.com slash Get Indie News. All right. 